so the last topic from this chapter uh, i told you there's one topic left in this chapter so we need to do that topic today so the topic is uh factors affecting angle of deviation given by the sine delta so what are the factors that affect the angle of deviation so first one is angle of incidence so this is one of the most important factors uh, that is angle of incidence how angle of incidence uh, affects the angle of deviation so so when the study was ca carried out about uh, the dependence of angle of deviation on angle of incidence so there was there was a graph plotted for value of angle of incidence and angle of deviation and it was found out that when the value of angle of incidence decreased i mean increased the value of angle of deviation decreased so when angle of incidence was increasing angle of deviation was decreasing and it decreased only to a certain point here and after that it again rose so angle of deviation rose after that so what happened was initially when angle of incidence was increasing the angle of deviation was decreasing and it reached a point here right so this this point was known as delta minimum so the angle of deviation did not go lower than this value right so it didn't go lower than this value and if you want to understand it better the left side of the graph represents i1 that is the first angle of incidence and i2 this part represents i2 that is the final angle of emergence so by this graph we could conclude that the angle of deviation the, its minimum angle of deviation is minimum when the two angle of incidences are equal i1 equal to i2 because at this point at this point i1 is equal to i2 because there is no two point in the graph so there is just one point in the graph which means basically means that i1 and i2 are exactly the same so delta minimum happens when i1 equal to i2 right so i1 equal to i2 so we can come to a conclusion that delta minimum equal to 2i minus a because we had a relation something like delta uh, angle of deviation angle of deviation is given by i1 plus i2 minus a right so now in place of i1 and i2 we have in place of delta we have delta minimum i1 and i2 they are exactly the same so this is 2i minus a so this is the angle of deviation this is the minimum angle of deviation that happens when the angle of incidences the two angle of incidences i1 and i2 are equal so basically i1 is the angle of incidence in the first refracting surface of the prism right so this is a prism i1 is the angle that is formed here so this angle is i1 and i2 is the this angle this is i2 so this happens when i1 is equal to i2 so angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence so let this be given as i itself so i plus i will be 2i minus a so delta minimum happens when the angle of incidence the first angle of incidence is equal to the angle of emergence so this is the first factor uh, on which the angle of uh, deviation depends right so there is another so this is the first factor so first factor we derived was delta minimum equal to 2i minus a so this was the first one so you need to remember the graph okay so this is delta this is i so it decreased to a particular value then after that it started increasing again so this is known as delta minimum so this happens when i equal to i1 equal to i2 now the second factor was refractive index refractive index of the medium now this this is quite straightforward if you if you know your concepts really well so if i say i have a prism i have one prism that is made up of let's say glass okay and i have another prism that is made up of let's say a, a material that is denser than glass okay denser than glass so 
Now, the, these two have the exactly same angle of prism. So their A's are equal. Angle of prism is equal. This is the normal. This is the angle of incidence. I mean, this is the incident ray. This is the angle of incidence. Let's say I. So we have the second prism as well. Again, here the in incident ray is such that its angle of incidence is I again. So they have the exactly same angle of incidence. So now, if you know your concepts really well, if if the angle of incidence angle of incidence remains the same, but the medium is changed. So if the med this one is compared to this medium, this is a rarer medium, right? This is a more denser medium. So let's say the light bends to this much. It bends this much. Now in this case, the light will bend further down, right? Because this is a denser medium and it'll move away from the normal. So it'll try to, I mean, it'll move towards the normal. So when it's going from a rarer medium to a denser medium, it'll move towards the normal. So it'll move further towards the normal than this one because this one is a rarer medium now. This one is a rarer medium and this one is a far more denser medium, right? So now, as you can see, when the refractive index of the medium is increased, when the refractive index is increased, in this case, refractive index is increased, right? The refractive index of this medium is more than refractive index of this medium. So when the refractive index is increased, the, the angle in which the ray is refracted also increases. So if that angle increases, angle of deviation will also increase. Because angle of deviation is basically nothing but the angle to by which the initial incident ray bent inside the prism. So that is angle of deviation, right? So angle of deviation is basically I1 plus I2 minus A. So now, if the angle of incidences remain the same, angle of incidences remain the same, only the refractive index change, which means that the angle of deviation will be more in the case where the, 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 the medium is dense. So this, this medium is denser than this medium, which means the refractive index of this medium is high, refractive index of this medium is low. So if refractive index is high, it will bend the light more. So if this light is bent more, its angle of deviation will also increase. So for a denser medium, the angle of deviation is higher compared to a rarer medium with the same angle of incidence. If your angle of initial angle of incidence is the same, then the angle of deviation of a denser medium with higher refractive index is more compared to a rarer medium with a lower refractive index. Okay, so this should be very clear. So the statement from this one is, so if there is high refractive index, high refractive index, which basically implies it is it is a denser medium, right? It's a denser medium, which then it should automatically come to your mind that angle of deviation increases because the light will be deviated more. The light will bend more, right? Then, okay. First, 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 Okay, so kun case which one will have more bending? So which one will bend the light more? This one or this one? This one or this one? Come on. First ko is a, a rarer medium. Second one is a denser medium. I know. This is air, okay, outside. Both case it is air. Okay. Now the prism is made up of glass in the first case. In the second case, prism is made up of another material that is denser than glass. Glass one, then dense material, your prism. Outside it's air only. So now this incident ray that is like incident at the same angle on both the prism, which one will bend more? Will this, will this ray bend more or will this ray bend more? Exactly. So it'll bend more here, right? So if something is bending more, if the incident ray is bending and refracted, if it's getting refracted more, obviously its angle of deviation will increase, right? So angle of deviation, Manik, what, what, what was the explanation that I gave you? The simple explanation was the angle by which the incident ray deviates from its original path. So this is the actual path of the incident ray. Then it's then it deviates after it strikes the prism. So now angle of angle of deviation is basically this angle, right? By what angle it deviates? This is the original path. This is the path after refraction. So this is the angle of deviation, right? Okay, now so I, I told you 
told you this one, right? So angle of deviation is basically by what angle the incident ray is deviating. Now in which case will the uh, incident ray deviate more in this case or this case? The second case. Exactly. So when a denser, when we have a denser medium or a medium, a denser medium is basically a medium with high refractive index, right? So when a medium dense, it has higher refractive index. It has more capability of refracting light than a rarer medium. So if, if light is incident on a medium that is denser, that is it has high refractive index, high refractive index, then its angle of deviation will also be high. That is it. Is it clear now? Okay, Malia, complete budget. Yes. So that is that is very simple though this graph was found experimentally so when angle of incidence was decreased in a prism in the same prism in a constant prism the prism was not changed so angle of incidence was decreased continuously so angle of incidence I mean increased continuously so angle of in incidence was let's say in the first case two degree let's say in the third case four degree second case third case let's say it's eight degree so it was it was constantly increased right and and the value of angle of deviation was also noted right for every angle of incidence so at two degree what was the angle of deviation it was noted for four degree for eight degree whatever it is so it was noted and it was found that that the angle of deviation kept on decreasing till a particular point right till a particular point of the angle of incidence the angle of deviation kept on decreasing and from that point the angle of incidence uh, I mean the angle of deviation also increased with increase in angle of incidence right so in first case in the first part of the experiment the angle of in incidence was increased which prom prompted the angle of deviation to decrease so angle of deviation was decreasing and at one point the angle of deviation reached its minimum point so this was known as delta minimum and after that further increase in angle of incidence increased the angle of deviation so now this delta minimum was achieved when the angle of incidence was equal to angle of emergence. So first, first side ma, what was the angle of incidence? And at the last side of the prism, the final uh, side of the prism where the ray is emerging out of the prism, that angle of in, that angle. So both the angles were equal at this point. So at this point, it was observed that both the angles were equal. I1 was equal to I2. So we know there is a relation of delta that I, I1 plus I2 minus A. Now we know that delta minimum happens when I1 and I2 are equal. So it's basically basically I plus I minus A. So this is equal to 2I minus A. So delta minimum. Clear? So this is experimentally conducted, okay? I'm not adding anything to it. This was experimentally done and experimentally verified. So is it clear, this relation? Not talking about inside the prism. No, prism bitra. We are not talking about anything inside the prism. Only thing we are talking inside the prism is angle of deviation. How is this angle of deviation being affected by the incident ray? So there are two incident rays in a prism, right? So this is a prism. This is the first incident angle, and this is the final incident angle. This is I2. This is I1. This is I2 right so now how are these two affecting the angle of deviation that is inside now it was found out that angle of deviation is minimum when these two are equal so this happens minimum when i1 is equal to i2 so this was experimentally found out i didn't do anything i didn't interfere i didn't do anything here so it just experimentally found out that at this point where the angle of deviation was minimum i1 is equal to i2 so we already know your derived gori ki delta equal to i1 plus i2 minus a now we know that delta minimum happens when these two are equal so when you substitute these two as equal quantities as i and i you get delta minimum equal to 2i minus a so this is the explanation now where is the doubt still still you have doubts regarding this part Okay. It's very simple. Oh. It's very simple. So what is the next? What was I teaching? The refractive index one in So it's very simple. So if the refractive index is increasing, which means the medium is denser. So in that medium, the light will bend more basically. So if the refractive index is high, then the angle of deviation will also be high. So that is very simple. Uh, 
simple explanation to that and there is you one more the yes you factors of affecting angle of deviation hai na yes. so bhaneko chai angle of incidence incidence jab equal huncha tete bela chai angle of deviation maximum huncha minimum minimum huncha minimum huncha मैक्सिम Okay, so these these two factors are very very important, and 